We are now recording. Welcome to IS 50A, day one, week one. Game development. You will learn how to make games this semester. You will go through the basics of game development. And I am your professor, Bill Kearney. This is my daughter, Ada, who uh, assists me in developing games. Sometimes we can show off the water temple if you want, Ada. Uh, she's sat in on enough of the lectures that I've given while uh, teaching from home that I think she actually has uh, a good, a fairly good grasp on, on the process at this point. Daddy, What's up, girl? For some reason, when I was messing with like the planes, the water temple just, the water plaza just got a bit destroyed. Did you see it? Mm, I don't know. I'll take a look at it. It yes. went a bit weird. Like, <clears throat> all the stuff, like, moved to this side, and now it's, like, half inside the cliff. Huh. Okay, well, I'll have to take a look at that. So, yeah, so uh, lectures take place on Discord. They will start at 1.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, will run till 3. IS50B starts at 3 and goes till 4, and um, all the lectures will be recorded, put online. You have until the start of the next class to watch the lecture and do the daily work. There will be work due every day, and that work will basically be how we take attendance in this class because it is asynchronous. You don't technically have to be here. I highly recommend you be here, though. You uh, will learn a lot um, faster if you're live and can ask questions and things like that, in my opinion. So uh, everybody say hi on the IS50 lecture room channel. Just wave to everybody. Uh, please feel free to talk while I am talking. Uh, this is my daughter saying hi also. Um, uh, this is not a normal class where if you uh, talk while the professor's lecturing, they they will glower at you and tell you to be quiet and stuff like that. Nope, it's Discord. You don't interrupt me. Um, I have two screens set up, and so I've got this screen here, and I'll be doing the lecturing on this screen, and then I've got Discord on this screen, and every so often when I come to a pause in what I'm saying, I you'll see me look over, and I will uh, uh, answer any questions and things like that. So... Feel free to ask questions while I'm talking, and I will answer them uh, when I take a breath, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Where's the pure? It says the, sh the spice has been shipped. Is this from Dune? It is from Dune. Yeah. Good eye, girl. Uh, so this is actually a pretty cool uh, background that I found uh, based on Dune. You said technology is not allowed. They don't allow computers that think like humans. And so uh, depending on which faction of the Dune universe you're talking about, uh, the Ixians, for example, uh, do a lot of the spice switch. Yeah, the Ixians do a lot of sort of quasi legal um, computing stuff. Cartag, you can see that it's from Arrakis. Okay, so uh, what are we going to learn this semester? We are going to learn about making games. We're going to play games, that's fun. Playing games is fun, making games is even more fun, I think. It's more work, you know. It's sometimes it's just like ah, I just want to play a game, you know, but honestly. When you make a game, it's a cool experience. It is a, it is a really fun experience. And um, I personally have worked in the industry briefly uh, for game development. Uh, most of my experience, though, doing game development is as a modder. And I uh, achieved moderate success uh, with one of my mods having over a million people play it. Um, and, uh, and then I've released many other mods over the years as well to lesser success. <clears throat> So, um, the, uh, the games industry, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that during the semester. Okay, so it is all online. Um, I say you need a group, but after, um, uh, this is a new semester, 132, uh, you will need a group, maybe. Let's put it that way. I, I think this class is a lot better if you can get a group and work on the projects together in a group. That said, uh, my experience with teaching online over the last couple semesters, this is going to be the fifth time I've taught this class online. Summer, fall, spring, summer, fall. Yeah, it's the fifth time I've taught it. Technically, the end of last spring too. So five and a half <laughs> times I've taught it online. Uh, the hardest part in this class is actually getting people to coordinate online together. That's That's the hardest part of this class. And so... I would recommend posting on Discord, looking for group, LFG, um, get a group together. That said, if you want to go solo, 
um, you, you can. Oh. So, um, the uh, uh, you don't have to be here for class, but I highly recommend you're here for class. Okay. Um, it is it is a fun class. Uh, I I will give homework assignments where I order you to play video games. You know, which is not something you will probably get in your physics class or sociology or you know philosophy classes. You will actually have your professor order you to play video games, and I expect you to do it. Um, but you know, there there is a there is a fair bit of work uh, in this class as well. Yes. Yeah. Um. Remember, like, some people didn't even show up for the playing video games class. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, Torres uh, talk in the, um, the lecture room for... Uh, uh, we, have, we have two different chat channels set up on Discord for this class. We have the lecture room, uh, which is used for students to talk and for me to talk during the uh, lecture times, 1.30 to 3. And then there's the help center where you ask for help outside of, outside of class hours. And we split them up so that the uh, the, the two don't kind of cross the streams. You can, um, you know, when people are talking during lecture, it doesn't scroll the, the help center up off the, the, the bottom of the screen. So, um, uh, yeah. So I hope, has anyone here played a video game before? Just out of curiosity. And if you have, please uh, tell me what your favorite uh, genre or maybe favorite game is, something like that. Ada, what, what is your favorite? What is your favorite game? You have one, two, Valorant right now. Okay, all right. It's somewhere between Val... It's either Valheim or Skyrim. Valheim or Skyrim, all right. Good taste, good taste. Halo franchise, all right. It's cool. Um, I played I played a fair bit of Halo back in the day. I used to think I was good at Halo, too. And then the, uh, the the remakes came out, and after having not played it in ten years, getting school, <laughs> I realized I was not good at Halo. So, um, yeah. Although all of the remakes did kind of change. Um, Is he trying game. to say Valheim too? Uh, Val, uh, maybe Valorant, maybe Valheim. Yeah. Oh. Bagel bites. Uh, are you talking about Valheim or Valorant? Both. He's Both. Talking. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, Stover, I'm playing Teardown, a realistic voxel sim. That sounds... I, I've heard of that before. It's like in a street scene or something like that. Um, yeah, I see the link is followed. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I typically don't buy early access games. I did buy Valheim. Uh, Valheim's pretty well developed for an early access game. It's still only about half done, though. Uh, Shadow Run Returns. Oh yeah, 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 Dark Cloud. I played Dark Cloud. Um, yeah, I, I I was the Kickstarter for uh, the Shadow Run Returns series. I actually have a T-shirt uh, from uh, the developer. You'll see me wear it every once in a while. Uh, planning to play Disco Elysium and Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, Disco Elysium is a fantastic RPG. Um, but it came out like two years ago, I think. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Disco Elysium. Um, what, what you don't realize when you play Disco Elysium the first time through is how different it is every time you play it through. And so I actually played through the first chapter, so to speak, like four or five different times, seeing just how different the dialogue was and, and the different... Like, your, your character thinks different things and, and interacts with people in different ways. And you, you realize, like, for every interaction, there's, like, a host of different ways it can go based on your skills and your... Uh, um, I guess their skills or stats or whatever you want to call them. Darkest Dungeon. I played a fair bit of Darkest Dungeon as well. I didn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't really suit my 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 mood so much. I, I did play it a fair bit though. Daddy. Yes, girl. Um, for, about Valheim being in early access, you're getting it before all of them are sold out. Well, they, they don't. The digital games don't sell out. That's true. But um, kickstarting like uh, yeah, having a having a T-shirt for Shadowrun Returns. Kind of cool. I, I played a lot of the Shadowrun. Uh, RPG. But why does Shadowrun? Shadowrun? Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Shadowrun. It's a, it's a combination of Tolkien and cyberpunk. So you've got elves and dwarves in a cyberpunk future, basically. It's Shadowrun. Mm -hmm. uh, Monster Hunter. Yeah, I've never played any of the Monster Hunter games. Um, I, I have some friends that are really into it. 
But um, yeah, I've just never never played them for whatever reason. Okay, what's up, girl? Mm. Who's is Tolkien the person who wrote the Dune books? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So um. Tolkien sounds familiar. So, uh, let's go on to Canvas and go over... Yeah, Tol J.R.R. Tolkien is the guy who wrote Lord of the Rings. So let's go on to Canvas. This is your center point for the class. IS-58, Fall 2021. It's got a... The, the, uh, the picture, by the way, is for a Far Side comic that uh, my parents used to uh, sort of mock me with when I was a kid. Uh, Can you save the princess? We need skilled men and women. $75,000 a year plus retirement. Uh, looking for Super Mario Brothers player, hundred thousand dollars plus your own car. Expanding company needs skilled computer games operator. So, so these parents are like looking at their kid playing video games, thinking about all the great jobs the kid can get from playing video games. And then, of course, you know, I ended up working in the games industry for a couple of years, and you know, got paid for it. You know? So, um, it's a classic, classic uh, comic. So, anyway, so the modules section of canvas is sort of your this is the the main this is the center thesis for this class okay so whenever an assignment is posted it will come up on the module section ever after every class there is a uh, quiz i'll put or or some sort of work to do for the day to indicate that you were there that you were present that day that you have learned the material for the day and you will say they'll just have like a date on them and when you complete it that counts as attendance for that day, okay? So like, um, like uh, for example, I might have you build a snowman and uh, and you have to make a snowman in Unreal Engine, which we'll get to in a bit, and screenshot it and attach it on Canvas by the deadline. And the deadline is always the start of the next class, okay? So every Tuesday, you will be given an assignment due on Thursday. Every Thursday, you're given an assignment due on Tuesday at the start of class, not at midnight. Most people are used to Canvas assignments being due at midnight or 11.59, whatever. Um, no, you, you have until the start of the next class to demonstrate that you were present, even if you're just watching the video online, uh, and uh, produce something, okay? Sometimes it'll be just like a multiple choice quiz, two questions or something like that. Sometimes you'll have to like build a, a cabin in the woods or something like that, okay? Uh, will this be under different weeks? Uh, this will be under different weeks. There's week one, there's week two, week three. I've, I just cleared everything out. Oh, this one's published. It shouldn't be published. Um, so we've got, I've got all the weeks set up. And then uh, I, I did leave the summer 2020 stuff up uh, because um, I, had, I, I don't know. I just felt like I had some pretty good lectures in there. And so if you just want to watch random lectures, uh, I, I have a whole series on the math that goes into video games game design, uh, modding, Quake. Um, like, I didn't want to delete them. And so basically, they're, they're just there if you want to learn more about the different topics. Um, I, 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 you know, it was just kind of one of those things where it's, where it's like, you know, when a, when a rock band um, has, like, a great performance, they'll, like, take the recording of that and, like, turn that into, like, a, a DVD or something like that. It's kind of like that, like... Like that year, I, I felt like I had a pretty good set of lectures. And so uh, I just leave those up in, in case you want more detail on anything. You don't have to look at any of them. You can, you, you're, you're perfectly free to ignore them all. It's fine. Okay. Best hits album. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and some rather famous uh, goof ups as well in there. As, <laughs> as well. Uh, uh, you, you'll, you'll have to watch the lectures to know what I'm talking about because I'm absolutely not going to repeat. Uh, especially recorded on YouTube, some of the mistakes that I made during summer 2020. So uh, just leave that as an Easter egg. Okay, um, so yeah, so basically every day uh, there will be a small assignment um, put up and uh, all the lectures will be recorded and the URLs, if we scroll down to the bottom, um, you'll see that there's like, um, this, this is from uh, last semester. You'll see that when you click on it, it will open up a YouTube video and uh, that will have the lecture on it. Okay. So uh, basically every every video 
will be up on YouTube. I will have a playlist on YouTube for this semester and uh, every lecture one at a time. And the reason why I do daily work is to make sure you stay up to date with it. Uh, it's really easy on an online format to just kind of like neglect it and not do anything. And, and that's, that's a lethal combination. Let me tell you, I was, uh, I took an online class over the summer and unfortunately I, I didn't really think it through very much. And I went on vacation, uh, right when the class started. And so I was like in like a cabin in the woods, like watching this, these engineering videos and and then I go to a beach house and they're like, all right, go into your garage shop and like get some titanium and weld it together. And I'm like, I'm in a beach house. Like I, I have no capacity. I, I don't have a screwdriver, you know what I mean? And we're supposed to like build it. Like, I'm like, yeah, I can't really do this. And so I'm like, I'll, I'll get to it when I get back to Fresno. And then at that point I was like two weeks behind and I was just like, ah, no. You know, because each of the lectures is like two to three hours long. And I was like, oh, Lord, I've got like 20 or 30 hours of videos to get. <laughs> yeah. So zone out, forget about class to the last second. Yeah. So the, the goal of the structure of this is to encourage engagement with you guys. I want you guys talking to me as much as you can on Discord. Post memes. I want everybody to post your favorite meme right now on Discord. Break that ice. Send me your, my daughter will post her favorite meme, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and, and just please talk a lot. Uh, the, the worst thing for me is like when there's just like dead silence on discord and like nobody's saying anything because then I'm just like, are they at Taco Bell? You know, like, are they completely lost? Are they just, or is it too easy? I, like, it, it's really hard to calibrate when you're not getting any feedback and you don't have in person. You can see when students are like lost, they're just kind of like. I'm not posting any of them. You're not posting I'm anything? Yeah, when I students are lost, you can see it. Or if they're bored, you know, like, oh, okay, I got it already. Or if they're, like, working hard and you can see them, you know, you know, like, you can see that. But online, there's that disconnect. So I really want you guys to be active as much as possible on Discord so that I can get that feedback from you. And um, and then I will, I will do my part to try to keep it engaging as well. <laughs> I have no idea right now what your favorite meme is. It's hard to type and listen at the same time. That's fair. That's fair. That's also very fair. Okay. Um, hmm, tell me, did you play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater when it first came out? Yeah, I played it as a kid. It's my favorite game. Haitian is basically dead. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, so what are we going to do? Okay. So there are um, four kind of things we're going to be working on. Eh, not this one. Noop, noop, noop. Uh, we're gonna assignments, not grades. It's not like there's any grades to show anyway. So uh, daily participation is half your grade, and so every day you're gonna get a small assignment, like I said, building a snowman or building a cabin or something like that. Um, one of those every day. That's half your grade, and so that's again just to encourage you to keep up to date, watch the lectures, do the work, and if you do that, you'll probably get an A in this class. Then uh, towards the end of the semester, uh, there will be a modding project. And so the modding project is a quarter of your grade. You can mod any game you want, Skyrim, Minecraft. I personally know Quake, the original Quake engine, very well. I know it inside and out. And so that's what I teach how to mod. But if you want to mod Minecraft, I know there's a lot of people that like that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, some people have modded Skyrim before and things like that. That'll be due towards the end of the semester. That's a quarter of your grade. And then you will have to build a game inside of Unreal Engine of modest scope. It doesn't have to be too crazy or absurdly good or something like that. It's fine. Um, but you will have to make a game inside of Unreal Engine and that is also a quarter of your grade. And that is the class. So basically most of the grades in your class are going to be just from showing up every day or watching it online either way and doing the work. And so just produce a little bit of work every day and by the end of the semester you will actually have uh, the basic skills to make a video game. You'll know a little bit about making textures, uh, like rocks and grass and things like that. Um, you know how to make a landscape. You'll know how to maybe do a little bit of animation. Um, a couple different ways of it, like animating indoors, a little different from animating a person. Uh, you'll know how to do a little bit of basic programming. And you'll have a little bit of math knowledge as well. Because 3D games are a very math-based endeavor. And so don't be afraid of math. It's addition and subtraction and multiplication. 
You can add, subtract, and multiply. You can figure out all the math in uh, 3D gaming. Okay. So that is that is kind of the overview of this class. Most of it's daily participation. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about game design. We're going to talk about what makes games fun. All this kind of stuff. It's a fun class. Really, I really like teaching this class. Okay. So, all right. Go. Go. My leg's hurting, girl. Huh? Not right now, girl. Sorry. I don't. I don't have it downloaded. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll have to re-download it really fast while my students are watching. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions about the structure of the class? Modding any game is a quarter of your of your total grade. That is correct. Yeah. Mod anything you want. We had uh, um, a student modify the Lord of the Rings role playing game. That was kind of fun. Um, downloads. Um, we had a couple of people modify Minecraft. Some people modified Skyrim. There's a uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of options. Um, okay, there you go, girl. You got it. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we'll start off by just actually I'll just show you what we ended up with at the end of summer, which just finished ten days ago. So uh, you've been wanting to mod Stardew? Yeah, yeah. One student actually modified Stardew Valley. That's, uh, one of my fr uh, one of my friends slash former students was actually the first person to modify Stardew Valley, um, and you can actually maybe ask him for help. I don't know if yes. What's up, bro? Mm, yes, I don't think the questions are actually hard. It's just that it takes me longer to do them. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're just trying to build speed, girl. Yeah. That's the whole point of math facts is to do it quickly. Um, yeah. So Josh Navarro, see, girl. Okay. Yeah, Josh Navarro, one of my former. Uh, former students was in actually in the first class that I taught here in 2015, something like that. Um, he was the guy that figured out how to mod it because it doesn't like the, the developer didn't have modding anywhere on the radar and he sort of de uh, reverse engineered the, the object files and things like that. Posted it. Um, so let me f uh, open up Unreal Engine. So hopefully, all of you guys saw the email that I sent out and it had the list of the things you have to download. Did you guys all see that? Like uh, uh, you have to you have to install the Epic Games thing. Okay, and so when you have the Epic Games launcher, um, there there will be an Unreal Engine tab, and then under Library here, you will see that there is. Go to your math facts, girl. Okay, fine. We'll show what you what you did. Uh, you're gonna install uh, Engine. Let's see if they have it's still in preview. Okay. So install engine 4.26.2. Uh, new versions come out all the time. Um, can you borrow your phone just so I can turn myself? Uh, yeah, go for it. Um, uh, so just whatever whatever the latest version is, just install that. Okay. And uh, then um, I'm going to show every semester we build something. Let's see here. Summer 2021. And so I'm just going to show you guys what, what you can kind of expect. This semester, okay. Uh, I was making sure my computer could handle Unreal Engine Four. Uh, yeah, it is. It is resource intensive. The good news is the school does have gaming laptops available for checkout. So if you do not have a computer capable of running Unreal Engine, um, the school does have um, laptops that are that are actually pretty good. Okay, so uh, this is what we built. Um, last this this summer like 10 days ago finished with it and then my daughter uh, sort of took it and um, added some stuff like this uh, oh yeah look at that the uh, the ground just appeared all over that huh okay I'll melt the ground away real fast Yeah, this whole thing got shifted. That's weird. Yeah, look at that. The whole thing got shifted. 
Uh, we we installed a yeah we were, we were making some major changes. Look at that, the whole thing got messed up. Hmm. It's unfortunate. Yeah, that used to be stuck on the hillside. It's like the whole landscape just moved. I wonder if my daughter like slid the landscape or something. Maybe weird. The whole thing is like shifted sideways. Anyhow, so my daughter built this uh, this uh, kind of water temple looking area here. It took her about an hour to do it. So the nine year old can do it. Figure you guys can as well. Uh, she also built this uh, hotel area over here. Um, is it play? And uh, oh yeah, everything shifted. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, so uh, you can see that there is foliage on the ground. There are trees. Uh, there's a sun over there that casts God rays kind of nicely. Um, yeah, look at that. Everything, like the whole, I, I think she probably actually just dragged the landscape and just moved the entire landscape and then saved it, unfortunately, when she was working on it. So my daughter built this uh, hotel over here. Yeah, yeah look at that. It's, it's all messed up. Um, so if you walk up and hit E, the door opens and um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the landscape's all inside of the lobby now. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Um, so we got these boxes that chase you around. Uh, so she built this lobby. It's like a kind of a cool hotel lobby with a tree with lights on the inside of it. And um, <laughs> there's supposed to be couches on the side. And then she added a, an elevator that goes up and down here. Um, ah, boxes. Ah. Uh, we added a, a HUD system so that um, you got your uh, character portrait over there and uh, health bar and let's see if I can get on top of this. Before. Ah, I missed it. Okay. The downside to the yeah, it had, you must what have, happened? You must have dragged the landscape. Is is my guess? Yeah. Oh, there goes there comes here. <laughs> yeah. Did you drag the I, landscape? Yeah, but I can't drag it back. Yeah. Okay. And so there's an upstairs. Uh, hotel area. They hate the bathroom. They hate the bathroom? My students don't hate the bathrooms. No. Mommy, does. Mommy and daddy does. I don't hate it. Daddy does not like it. Got a little bathroom over here. It's fine. It's extreme bathing, right? It's got a pretty good view. Yeah. And then there is another... Ah, missed it. So my daughter built these platforms that go up and down. And so, uh, yeah. So this is all this is all stuff a nine year old can do. This one's blank, but the that one's blank, and then on the top floor there's a, a garden and stuff like that. Alright. So let's try selecting the landscape and, and moving, it moving it back. I tried control Z but it didn't mm. work. Ooh. No, that's oh, no. Uh, okay. Um, oh, look, it's fixed. Did, did I fix, fix it? it? I, I carved out that, that hillside there. But uh, yeah, you can see it's still... You, you must have you must have dragged that over a little bit. Okay. Um, hmm. Can you take a look at the water plaza? There, that should fix it. Can you go back and look at the water plaza and make sure it's okay? So now the road runs up to the stairs, the lobby. There you go. You guys can see what the lobby looks like now. And uh, looks a lot nicer without grass in the middle. The water plaza, I did carve away the cliff. Oops. I'm going to have to sculpt that back up. There we go. Sculpting. What happened? I, 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 I carved it away because I thought it was just this area that had been sculpted away. Let's put some put some land back up here. Okay, not a little too much. Let's smooth it out. Smooth it out. I know, girl. I know. All right, here we go. Carve that down. Carve that away. There we go. Oops. Okay, too that's pretty good. That's too much. Uh, let's make the radius smaller. you mess with it, okay. Alright now. 
There you go. Anyway, that's the kind of stuff you guys have to look forward to. Oh, what happened to the... There was an island in... Oh. In... No, this... I um, purposely carved you, it away. You did I, that? Yeah, I am purposely carved it away. There's supposed to be a waterfall there. Yeah, let's move the waterfall back. Yeah. Okay, so all of you need to have Unreal Engine installed and ready to go by Thursday. Uh, today I'm just kind of showing you guys the kinds of stuff you can do. Oh, inside of this, this rock here, my, my uh, daughter... Normally rocks are solid, right? But here she made it. You can walk through it. There's a secret area. And, ah, getting attacked. Uh, uh, uh. Up there, up there. Ah, there they go. You're also being attacked by the person to your side. Oh, that guy? Oh, look, the hillside. It's still messed up here. Yeah. We're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to mess with that. An invisible person is shooting. Yeah, you see the health bar? He's down there. He's below the, the ground. Yeah, you, you, did, you, did, you did something wrong, girl. I don't know. I'm gonna tell you. Oh yeah, look, that that thing is not lined up anymore either. That used to be on the hill over there. No, that was there before I moved the landscape. No, the the Stonehenge was right on the top of the hill. So, so you must have dragged it around. And so you got a snowman inside of there. Yeah, look at this. It's kind of screwed up too. Okay. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll s not save it. I'm not gonna save it. We should be able to. Uh, fix it a little easier without me carving away that land. Okay, landscaping looks pretty good, thank you. Yeah, and it automatically generates foliage, the textures will automatically become rock if it's uh, steep, it's grass and moss at different angles and, and things like that. So, um, we will start working on Unreal Engine on Thursday together. Uh, for now, your assignment is to uh, um, get a computer capable of running it ready. So. Uh, follow the directions in the email I sent out. Install 4.26.2, um, and then then you're going to be ready. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can buy quote unquote buy a lot of stuff off of the marketplace. So the Unreal Engine um, store has um, a free tab here, Welcome and to that does actually look pretty cool. Yeah, Viking Feast. That's cool. <gasps> Mommy said we should, uh, we is really expensive. Ultimate foliage. That looks cool, too. So this is money. All right, this costs money, 22 bucks. Pretty cool, though. That's actually really cool. You can have the, the foliage change based on the seasons. Oh, man, that's... I, I've spent a little bit too much money over the years on, on stuff like this, but they have a free tab. And so one thing that I want all of you guys to remember is there is a free for the month tab. And you want to buy those every month because they go back to being full price after the month is over. And uh, there is some cool stuff on the store right now for free. Advanced female customization allows you to have like a character creator for RPGs. And that will be only good through August, end of August. It's normally like uh, probably 20 or 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, no, $60 normally. So yeah, definitely pick that up um, when, when you have it installed. You don't have to install it, you just buy it then it's yours permanently. So what you'll see is when you go to the library tab, I've bought a lot of stuff over the years. And most of these are all free. All the Mega Stian stuff is free. Like Ooh. very, very little of it I actually ocean floor. spent money on. That we can really add cool. this into the ocean. That looks really cool. We though. can add this into the ocean, Dad. Yeah, that's cool. That is super neat. Yeah. Okay, we can add that into our project. Yeah. And so there's all sorts of free stuff. So just go ahead and buy them all. And then they'll be added to your library forever. Got a lot of free stuff added over the years. Okay. So that <gasps> Twin Motion Boats. Yeah, I just bought that one last night, actually. So you can... Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Free boats you can add. I wonder if they use the buoyancy system. There is a buoyancy system in Unreal Engine. It's cool stuff. All right. Enough for now. So... Um, if you plan on getting these designs from Unreal, would you suggest getting other storage devices? Uh, yeah, especially if you're going to be using a school laptop, you're going to want to, at a minimum, have like a USB drive uh, that can hold your project. And um, these these projects can be substantial. Uh, I've actually had to upgrade my hard drive several times in the in the last. Um, couple of years because I do so much game development, I, I just kept running out of hard drive space. So for example, the summer project that we made, Properties, is 
17 gigs. And so by contrast, like Red Dead Redemption 2 is 100 gigs. And just this little toy project you saw there with Ada's water temple and the hotel and stuff like that, it's 17 gigabytes. So it is brutal on your hard drive, especially if you have only like a small SSD or something like that. Like if you have a 256 gig SSD, Unreal Engine will blow up your hard drive. Unreal Engine itself is like 30 gigs or something like that. And then um, you start downloading asset packs, things like that. Uh, if I go into content, um, all those hotel decorations it in installed are half a gig. Uh, the woman that you saw running around inside of the lobby there is from a game called Paragon. She's 1.5 gigs just for that one character. Um, the nature, like the trees and stuff that you saw like that, is another gig and a half, 2.76. So you're, rip your hard drive. Like, it, it's just... That's one of the sad realities of doing game development is that you need hard drive space. So I have on my machine, I have uh, 27 terabytes of hard drive space. What are terabytes? Terabytes, a thousand gigabytes. So um, I have an eight, eight terabyte SSD. That's my main drive. 2 terabyte SSD, uh, 256 SSD, 500 SSD, 15 terabyte spinny disk, uh, and then I've got, um, I've got, I think, one that's inside of my machine but disconnected. Um, that's a, that's a, these are just little uh, partitions. So 18 plus 15 is 23, 24, 25, uh, 26, yeah, and then I've got I've got another hard drive. I think I've disconnected inside of there right now um, that has more space as well. So yeah, your, uh, your, your, your hard drives, you can see like, this is why I kept upgrading was because I just kept running out of space from doing this. So I'm like, nope, I am buying the biggest drives possible. And so I have a 15, 15 uh, terabyte spinny disc that um, you can see I've already filled like five, five terabytes on. How much was my 15 terabyte spinny disk? Uh, although, yeah. Uh, so my projects directory on there. Oh. Let's see. Video lectures, 300 gigs. Uh, student projects. Nine, nine gigs of student projects. I don't know. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things. And so if you're using a, a school laptop, you might want to invest in like a USB drive so you can back up your thing after the, after the semester is over. Uh, otherwise, it gets wiped when you return it. Okay. Uh, how much is a 15 terabyte spinny disk? Uh, let's check on new egg. One point five. No, no, no. Not one point five. <laughs> uh, hard drives. Uh, I believe the search results. Desktop internal. Uh, four terabytes and higher. It's not very specific. Is okay. Let's do that and do fourteen. Let's do sixteen terabytes. Which is maybe what it is. <coughs> Five hundred dollars. Something like that. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Um about well, seventy two hundred RPM is not too bad. Pretty big cache as well. Having a having a good cache size on, on a big hard drive helps a lot. Uh so the for the first half gig you transfer it just goes right into RAM and it just flies. Um Yep, yep. Okay. SSD is faster, for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, you, you want all your game development stuff kind of on an SSD so it loads quickly. You want your games on SSD so they load quickly. But uh, for bulk storage, um, having a 15 terabyte drive, you can just drop your old projects on and stuff like that. 
It's a good idea. Okay. So, gaming. Gaming. What makes games fun for you guys? Let's uh, let's stop lecturing for a second. What do you, what do you guys what do you guys like about games? Like why do you uh, you know why do you play games instead of I don't know going to a movie or you know, I mean there's a pandemic right now I guess it's maybe too easy a question but like when there's not a pandemic why would you play a video game rather than go see a movie or go outdoors in the beautiful sunlight. Go hiking. Why would you rather play video games and hang out with your friends? <laughs> or maybe hang out with your friends while, while you're playing video games. So why? What what makes what makes them fun? Like what what is uh, what is the draw? What is the attraction of video games for you? The dreaded out of doors. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen outside the video game that that whole meme. Screenshot of the Ben Bulbin region on the Ireland server. So there, there's this there's this uh, there's this meme that treats the the real world as a video game, and so the Tier Zoo guy on uh, uh, YouTube ranks uh, the current you know the best animals in the current meta and things like that. It's really funny. Um, so they call like Ireland a, a server. You know, there's the bird guild and stuff. Like that. So. Um, And so there's like uh, Reddit's outside subreddit, I think. Community challenge achievement. What's your level of run? You've watched that channel. Yeah, it's really funny. Peace of mind. Casual way to have a great time. It's not 105 degrees playing game. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Uh, immersion experiencing things you can't normally do. Yeah, flexible media for everyone. Be able to stomp someone in a fighting game. Is that fun, though? Like when you just totally crush somebody? Is that fun? I keep going AFK during the class mini game. <laughs> Every once in a while I go distract and go AFK. This is a problem the professor tries to reach me via the voice chat. I don't score very well in the mini game. <laughs> Hopefully you guys will do better in this class as mini game. Justin Watt versus an eight-year-old kid. Uh, yeah, some of the stuff on uh, on here it's 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 pretty funny. They they treat the real real world like a like a video game. Okay, so um, yeah, everyone it, it's kind of interesting to me. Like people play games really for quite different reasons. Some people like the adrenaline, you know, that you get when you're like in a really competitive. Um, you know, maybe you're playing ranked league or ranked anything, uh, Overwatch, Age of Empires, and they, they like that feeling of adrenaline they get when they're doing like a, a challenge series or whatever to go up to the next tier and become a master tier or whatever. Um, some people like the relaxation element of games, right? Real, real life is too stressful, and so they play games to relax. And uh, I'm sort of one of those, except... I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to, like, fall asleep playing a video game. You know what I mean? But, like, uh, I don't I don't like playing ranked. Like, any 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 ranked thing that adds a win or a loss to my permanent record is far too stressful for me. I do not play ranked Age of Empires or anything. Um, I simply don't like having my wins and losses tracked. You know what I mean? So, they like the feeling of being flamed here. Yeah. yeah, if you play League of Legends, like... Or even Overwatch. Like, in Overwatch, people will yell at you if you're not playing it correctly, you know. So, um, Escape from Tarkov, yeah. Rank in the Salt Lords, yeah. Not really into getting flamed by some nine-year-old cursing out. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, but, it, but it is interesting. Like, people will play the same game for, like, radically different reasons, you know, like, uh, I play Age of Empires 2 a lot. Not recently, but a lot. And uh, I only like playing it with friends. Like, I, I like having... Like, one of my favoritest things ever 
is like an eight-player game of just my friends playing Age of Empires 2. And you can have people of very different skill levels. You have some people that are like god tier and some people that are trash. And you're just in an eight way, sometimes a free for all. And then what happens is the god tier people go after each other and the, the trash people can kind of just sit there and play SimCity for a while and build up. And then when they're ready to like emerge from their box, they get slapped down by everyone else. And then they retreat back into their box and, and everyone's, you know, talking to each other. Like for me, like that is like, hmm. That is, that is the most fun that I have playing video games. Like, you know, just playing playing a game with friends, you know. Some friends, you know, are across the country and, you know, I haven't seen since college, right? Which, believe it or not, actually, I was just in college last semester, so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> my original college. Yeah, it's a while ago. Land parties of Age of Empires 2, yeah. Uh, when the toxic player ends up being in first place in an online multiplayer match, but he's been server muted by the system for being too salty. Yeah, so uh, Age 4 is out now. Or, sorry, can I say that? Hmm. It's in beta testing right now. That's that's a better way of putting it. So, um, so from from the look of it, uh, Age 4 is uh, kind of like a, a new spin on Age 2. So I'm cautiously excited for that. Uh, can't say much due to the NDA. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Okay, so... Uh, so yeah, so it, one of the things you'll learn in this class is like how to think about games and think like, why is this game fun? You know, like why, actually I have, I have a question for you guys. Why is League of Legends fun? Because I don't find it fun. I, I do, I do not enjoy playing League of Legends. Uh, why, somebody explain to me why, why is League of Legends fun? Please. Uh, I don't, I don't get it, honestly. I don't enjoy MOBAs. I don't like it either. I only find it fun when I play with other friends, but other than that, I don't. It's free. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of free games out there, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, there, there's some... Mm, man, the whole free-to-play thing, like, just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like, if I see a free-to-play game, like, my immediate reaction is to delete it. You know what I mean? Like, because you know there's going to be some sort of pay-to-win... You need to get 10 power crystals to continue. You know, you've played the game for five minutes. Now you have to pay a dollar to get more digital cocaine to keep your character going or something like that. Uh, I'd rather just give you $5 one time. You know what I mean? So, uh, normally play it to, to waste time. Okay, that's not... You're not really selling me on it. <laughs> play League of Legends to waste time. Mobos are like a form of a modern strategy game. They could be really good free-to-play games that have a weird feeling just because they're free. Yeah, there's always that... Like, the monetization of them is always, like, really sketchy. You know what I mean? Like, Path of Exile probably has the best monetization of any free-to-play game. Uh, they sell uh, cosmetics, but they also sell um, inventory space. So it's kind of sketchy even still because you can't really play the game unless you have inventory. It's a role-playing game. If you, if you try playing a role-playing game with no inventory, you're not going to have a good time. You know what I mean? So, uh, but Path of Exile, I think, does a pretty good job. Yeah. If you want to spend $80 on a new dress for your character, like, have at it, you know, is my opinion. Doesn't matter. Genshin Impact was never a free game. Yeah. Yeah, I played Genshin Impact for about an hour and was just so massively bored. Like, I, I just couldn't, like, I couldn't, I couldn't play it. Um, it, it looked beautiful. You know, and I get, like, it has, like, kind of a Breath of the Wild vibe going on. But I think it was just, like, I was just walking around so slowly everywhere that I was literally falling asleep while playing the game. Which might have been exacerbated with, by the fact I was playing it late at night. Which probably didn't help, but I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get into Genshin Impact. And given how much money my friends have spent on it, like, yeah, it's probably a good idea. I didn't. Warframe has that issue. Um, yeah, weird, weird startup permissions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so there's a there's a book that um, I kind of like. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it, but it's called The Theory of Fun by a game the name of Raph Coster, not Ralph Raph Raph Coster. And it's uh, it's laid out like a comic book kind of. Half the pages are like there's an illustration on every uh, right page. 
and then a then a little short little essay on the on the left page, a couple paragraphs, and um, and so his theory about what makes games fun are things that appeal to us from an evolutionary standpoint. So, for example, if you think about why hide and seek is fun, right? And it was fun. Like hide and seek is actually kind of a fun game. It's not fun if you win and nobody ever finds you. <laughs> That's kind of boring, actually. But hide and seek is kind of a fun game. And and Raf's theory is that hide and seek teaches kids like ambush tactics. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're in the jungle and there's like, you know, you're going to go hunting with your buddies and you have to like hide in the trees and like ambush the tiger or whatever. I don't know. Um, and so his his take is that things that we find fun uh, are are the kinds of things that like. You know, like how kittens will like attack and roll and play with each other and things like that. Like his theory is that mammalian play is training for the adult world, so to speak. And so, what we find fun in that sense of play are things that help us grow and develop our skills that would benefit us from an evolutionary standpoint. Now, like I said, I, I don't really um, like how does Genshin impact? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily see it, um, but that's his take on, you know, and, uh, things like chess would be, uh, fun because they're teaching strategy, like how to coordinate people together and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's an interesting take. Like I said, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but it's, it's an interesting take and it, it's a fun book. It's a short book you can read and it'll make you think about game design. And, and sometimes when I've taught this class, it's mostly game design, sometimes. Uh, every every semester I teach it a little bit different. And, and um, partly it's just based on the students that are in the class uh, and, and their skill level. So, um, um, why is tic-tac-toe boring? Genshin helps with gambling. I don't know if it helps. It teaches you gambling. <laughs> Maybe it teaches you not to gamble. I don't know. So, yeah, I, 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 I really hate loot boxes. Um, EA and their whole monetization scheme of selling people random loot boxes is just so... Hmm. I mean, at least Genshin will guarantee you something if you fail enough times. But, uh, man, Overwatch, yeah, I, I, I really couldn't stand Overwatch's loot. I, I can't stand loot boxes overall at all. Gambling for enemy wives, yeah. EA, EA buy, buy the same game for the next three years. Yeah, and we'll shut off the old servers. You can't even play the game that you bought before, right? So uh, you, you buy a game, and then four years later, they cut, they kill it. So you can't even play the old games if you want it. You know, which is another reason I hate EA. I don't hate them. Hate's too strong a word. TF2, yeah. TF2 is a good game. Um, no end goal. So yeah. So why why is why is tic tac is tic tac toe fun for you guys? Do you guys enjoy tic tac toe? Do you play it every night? Hundred hours in Steam on tic tac toe. Yeah, we fund three games for this studio, each increasingly more scummy than close them down. Yeah. Force everybody to use the frostbite engine, which is good for first person shooters, not so good for big open world games like Mass Effect Andromeda, and Gut Bioware as the result of it. There's an optimal way to play tic tac -toe. Okay. So does that make it fun or not fun? I mean, you know, there's an optimal way of playing a fighting game, right? So uh, Kano, Kano said that he enjoys raffle stomping people. So, uh, you know, if, if there's an optimal way of playing Street Fighter, like... Isn't that fun? Yeah. More of a Connect Four kind of guy. It's always the same. Yeah, there is that. Like, Tic Tac Toe has the problem of being very samey, right? Like, when you play the game and it's the same every time, it's like. boring. Right? Ghost of Tsushima, which is one of my. maybe my number one game from last year. Ghost of Tsushima is a fantastic game for a lot of reasons. But the combat system. it's a little bit repetitive. 
So they, they try to mix it up by having four different stances, and the stances have different moves and things like that. But the way the game is, is that if you're fighting somebody with a shield, you use this stance. If you're fighting somebody with a spear, you use this stance. If you're fighting somebody with a sword, you use this stance. And if you're fighting a, a great weapons guy, you use this stance. And there's no thought. You just switch into the stance and beat the snot out of them. And then there's a guy with a shield, so you switch into that stance and beat the snot out of them. Um, the Ghost of Tsushima combat, you can play it in different ways. You have different tools at your disposal. But basically, every combat is exactly the same. And so that is a, a downside to the game. Um, the, the combat is kind of repetitive. It's still a fantastic game, but yeah. When, when something's repetitive like that, it's kind of like... like I'll, I'll just like ignore combats after a while. It's just like... Uh, 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 whatever. I don't want to fight this. <laughs> Repetition's going to be fun. The new Doom was like that. The enemy can only die with this weapon. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not great. It's not, an, it's, yeah, there's better ways of doing it. So, uh, uh, I just enjoy chest. I couldn't, uh, chest. Okay, chest. I cannot even find the game for three months. Are you talking about Ghost of Tsushima, Diaz? Um, or Connect 4? <laughs> Connect 4 is more interesting than Tic-Tac-Toe. It's almost the same game, right? If you think about it, Connect 4 is four in a row Tic-Tac-Toe, right? But... There's something about Connect Four that makes it more fun. Yeah. Gravity, yeah. There's kind of there is some tactile element to like clicking it in and letting it fall, but like there, there's actually it somehow feels a lot more fun. And then Pente is five in a row, and that's also a fun game. And it's even more fun than Connect Four. So maybe six in a row is even more fun. I don't know. Um, element of choice in Connect Four, yeah. It's not samey like Tic Tac Toe. You always play the same game. Connect 4 is a little better. Connect 4 is a solved game, though. Did you guys know that? You can actually play a perfect game of Connect 4. It is just as boring as Tic-Tac-Toe. You just don't realize it. <laughs> uh, Pente is a little bit more complicated. Pente, you have to get five in a row. It's on a 2D, 2D board. It's played on a Go board, if you know what Go is. The, uh, you have white and black stones you put down. Uh, but you're, you're just putting down white and black stones, trying to get five in a row. Horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. It's a fun game. It's actually a really fun game. A couple years ago, I had students actually write Pente for a class. It's fun. You had to write an AI. That's even more fun. Yeah, so... Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, it's... Uh, I actually got a PS5 specifically just to play Ghost of Tsushima on it. So... Um, it's... Uh, it, it, was, it was worth it. You know? It was kind of funny. Like... Uh, how did you find one? Oh, uh, you weren't there for that class, Kino? Uh, it was the day It was the day that the PS5 came out, and the students, my students on Discord were all complaining. It was like, what, a year ago when it came out? Um, fall semester 2020, something like that. My students were all complaining that the PS5 was impossible to find. So I'm like, really? You know, let me see if I can find one. So I, so I, I just like opened up a browser, went to target.com. Uh, okay, let's search for a PS5. All right, uh, PlayStation 5, where is this? PlayStation 5, and clicked on it, added it to cart, bought it. <laughs> and my students were like, what? I'm like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just went on the website and bought it, and they're like, It was like one of those one in a million, you know, chances where you just like roll the dice and they happened to drop a set of PS5s right before I went on the website and I, I was just going to mess around and I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll buy it. And scroll it off the screen, punch in my credit card information, buy it. My, it, it was like that reaction gif where the people are going, <laughs> it was just, it was just a giant flex on my students, honestly. So... Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it was it was just funny. I, I I had to buy it at that point because I was just like, all right, they they would my students would kill me if I did, if I didn't buy it if it was available. So um yeah so we got we got twenty minutes left today um yeah so uh, I worked in the industry for a few years, and it's 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 called the industry right, like whenever you talk to people in the games industry, they call it the industry. Um. 
I still have friends in the industry. If you if you uh, look at the summer twenty twenty lectures, I had a friend of mine who worked for Wizards of the Coast, uh, Nintendo, uh, Pokemon. Uh, over the years, uh, he came in and gave a guest lecture on game design, and so you can see that um, it's called a like guest lecture in the summer twenty twenty lectures. Uh, you can see him. I, I bring in guests. I, I was going to have a guy from AMD come in over the summer, and he sort of ghosted me, so I don't know what happened with that. But somebody who worked in like AMD's gaming something or other is going to come in. Uh, I, I've actually never met the guy. I don't know who he is. He was just... Uh, he, he played custom team portraits and just contacted me out of the blue. I'm like, hey. It, you know, he told me he works at AMD Gaming or something. Like, hey, you want to give a talk to my class? He's like, sure. And then never heard back, so... Um, try to make a game a few years back with your friends. It filled badly, lost a lot of money and friendships in it. Yeah, you want to you want to avoid situations like that, especially when you're starting off. Um, don't spend a lot of money making a game. Like you might need to buy some assets, you might buy some art or something like that. Uh, I would just use placeholder. Like I would use the free assets as much as possible, and just get it get what's called a a vertical slice or a proof of concept going, where you. Uh, can show that the concept of your game actually works. So like maybe like one level and like eight weapons and three monsters and it's playable, you know, and people can sit down and play it over and over again and see, is it fun? Yeah, that's the biggest question. Like, is it fun? Does it work? We have all these ideas for like, all right, we'll have a innovative new reloading system or something. It's the most realistic reloading system in the world where you have to like slam the bullets in with your fingers and if, if you can't do it and it fumbles the bullets all the time, it's it's not fun. You know what I mean? So, um, oh, that's horrible. I'm sorry. Not everyone can be Cuphead on their first try. Yeah, well, okay. So most indie games that are successful, by the way, are not people who are doing game development for the first time. Even if it's their first game as an indie developer... If you look at the people, the, the indie games that actually are successful, like for some threshold, like making over 250000 a year, or total. Um, if you look at the games that are successful by that metric, which, you know, a quarter million dollars is, it's money, but it's not like Call of Duty money, but it's money. Uh, if you look at how many, um, they, they did a histogram showing how many years of experience the developers had out of all the indie games that made it. Um, 10% were in their first year or two. Like, almost nobody. Um, most indie game developers that make it have been in the industry for 10 years or something like that. And because when you're on your own, you have to do everything. When you work for a AAA studio, you might just be the sound guy. Or you might just be the map maker. Or you might just be the character animator. Or you might just be the AI person. Or you might just be the, the, the um, person who does the game engine. When you're an indie person, that's all you. <laughs> you have to do all of them. And you have to be good enough at all of them that it doesn't suck. And so uh, if you look at the histogram of like years of experience from indie games that make it, these aren't people starting off trying to break in. They're people that were in and trying to break out. <laughs> do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, they were tired of working for EA, you know, because EA is kind of a crappy company to work for. You know, no offense to my friends at EA, <clears throat> which I have several. Um... It's kind of a, yeah, I'll, I'll just say it. It's, it, you know, it, it's, it's actually well known. Like if you look at the surveys they release of like bad employers, like EA is always very highly rated on one of the worst employers to work for uh, metrics, right? Uh, and so they gather their skills working for electronic arts or other companies, and then they form their own game studio. And that's very common. Um, want to be free, free of the big vampires. Yeah. And, and, and when you've got those skills, it's actually great to work for yourself. Um, I've, I've worked with several independent studios over the years. Um, for example, do you guys know Sony online entertainment? SOE? Um, yeah, at least we're not blizzard. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been following that whole thing, but that, Wow. Yeah, it, mm, yeah, yeah. Blizzard, uh, Blizzard's not, uh, not, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. So uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, Sony Online Entertainment. Um, Sony Interactive. Sorry, Sony Interactive. 
thought it was Sony Online. Oh, whatever. Daybreak? Uh, oh, it was Sony Online. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's now called Daybreak, based in San Diego. Yeah, that's 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 right. And so I, I had friends in San Diego that worked for Midway. They worked on like Mortal Kombat and Hydro Thunder and games like that. And then um, I had friends that worked for SOE. Uh, they did EverQuest was the big one they were famous for. I was actually one of the first people to play EverQuest. That was kind of fun. Uh, and I was a beta tester for Planet Side also and Star Wars Galaxy also. Yeah, let's bring it back. Bring it back memories. Um, so uh, I guess they're called Daybreak now. Um, D&D Online. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, so basically there was a group of friends that worked at uh, Sony and uh, they had their project canceled out from under them. They were working on football games and the NFL sold the exclusive rights, if I'm remembering history right, uh, NFL sold the exclusive rights to the names of the players in the NFL to Madden. Which I think is... Is that EA? Does anyone know? Is Madden EA? Mm. It's EA. Yeah. So EA bought... They bought a monopoly on football games, essentially. So if you wanted to make a football game that didn't have any teams or players that anyone's heard of in it, you can do it. And so I think they actually released The Lot or something like that after that. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm remembering right. Uh, I don't know. But they, they made like some sort of like street football game or something like that using their their skills, but then after that they basically folded because the EA bought the rights to everyone's names, and I'm not really sure how that's like fair to the players, you know what I mean? Like People have the right to buy your name. I don't know. It's a weird concept to me. But um, still, it makes up roughly 39% of their sales. Yeah. It's not fair to anyone. Yeah. Um, especially NCAA, right? So like uh, NCAA basketball, right? Um, I think they, that used to be... I think that might have been SOE. S-S-O-E. E no, that's EA also. Sorry. <laughs> uh, EA change your name. Like other games based on NCAA sports, it cannot feature the players' names. It's only the numbers were used. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it's a weird, it's a weird thing that you could sign your name away, you know? So, um... Yeah, so anyhow, so uh, my my friends, they, they left. They, their their project got canceled. And so they left and they founded their own game company. And uh, and people do that all the time, right? And and so you have, uh, you usually have a group of people, like a programmer, an artist, an animator, you know what I mean? Like a sound, sound dude, you know. They all form a team. And then they either make their own game or very commonly they, they look for contract work. So like another group, uh, also, which kind of came from SOE, uh, they they picked up uh, the license for Cars. Uh, do you guys know Cars, the Pixar? You guys know uh, Cars? Yeah. Um, car, Pixar Cars, Nintendo Wii. So it was a launch title for the Nintendo Wii. And the Nintendo Wii was a big deal, right? Like, it was innovative. Wow, $76. Holy smokes, dude. Wow. Yeah, so it was the launch title for the Nintendo Wii. And I got to play it uh, in, in a warehouse, you know, in their, their, their game studio on a prototype Nintendo Wii. is this giant box. It was a development kit, and uh, I got to play it before the Wii came out. And uh, what happened was THQ had the license to this game, and they needed somebody to bring it to the Wii. Because you can see it's on, you know, different, different platforms, right? And so my buddy, um, he and his team said, hey, we can do that for you. We can do contract work for you. And so they, they ended up doing uh, a number of contract work for THQ. They did ATX versus M... What's it? ATV, ver ATV versus MX, is that what it's called? Yeah, something like that. Like this this series, and that's also THQ. See? So, 
uh, and so that's just how the game industry works, you know, is that, um, uh, you just, you know, sometimes you make your own game. Sometimes like a studio is just like, Hey, we need somebody to take this to a new platform. We'll pay you money. Yeah, okay, sure. We'll do. And, and if you have the, the right resume, then you, you get the job and they worked and, and they did that until they couldn't find a contract and then they went under. But when they went under, it's not like everyone lost their houses. What happens is when your little friend studio runs out of contracts, everyone just, they dissipate in the wind. And so my friend went to Zynga. Do you guys know Zynga? Have you guys ever heard of Zynga before? Z-Y-N-G-A? Facebook games, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Farmville, right? They have a like five-story building in uh, San Francisco, or did, I don't know if they're still around. I think they're still around. And they have like three different bars on their five stories. Like, there's a lot of alcoholism in the games industry as well. Um, let's see if they're still in San Francisco. Yep, there you go. Six nine nine. Wow, what a great address. Six nine nine Eighth Street. Um, Map Quest. Really, Map Quest is still the is still around. That's amazing. Yeah, there you go. So it's a pretty it's a pretty good location in San Francisco. Right, like that's, yeah, it's pretty good. Like uh, Google's got a, uh, Google's got a building somewhere in that in that general vicinity. So yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty good place. A lot of a lot of money in farm bill or whatever. So, uh, who knew Facebook game devs would want to drink? Yeah, three bars. They had one on the roof, one in the basement, one on the third floor. Something like that, and uh, they would drink during the day. And um, yeah, another friend of mine who worked there wasn't my other friend that I was telling you about. And we were both friends on Facebook. He's like, wait, how do you know her? And she's like, wait, how do you know him? And I'm like, well, you were married to a friend of mine and you were my first boss at this company and you're both at Zynga now. And yeah, yeah. she, she worked on Fallout New Vegas, that, that woman that I was telling you about. So I brought her out a couple of years ago and she gave a talk uh, to the students there on the development of Fallout New Vegas and what it's like to work in the games industry and talked about the sexism at, at Blizzard. Topical. <laughs> yeah. 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 True story. So, yeah, Fall New Vegas was a good game. And, um, and she, uh, she worked at uh, Obsidian, um, during, during that whole thing. Yeah. It was cool stuff. A lot, a lot of good stories about that. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, anyhow, uh, there are a lot of jobs in game development. The trouble is there's also a lot of people that want to make video games. It's this really weird situation where like, if you're established in the industry, if you've got, uh, if you've got a game credit for, um, Fallout New Vegas and, uh, what she also worked on Alpha Protocol and, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever, like three or four other AAA titles. You can get a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can get a job. The only way you're not hireable uh, after you've had that much experience in the industry is if you, like, violate an NDA or something like that. Like, if, you, uh, if you're if you working on um, uh, at Respawn Entertainment, which is where she is now, and if she were to be like, hey, guess what, guys? I'm working on blah, you know, uh, she would get fired and probably blackballed from the industry, right? That's, that's really the only cardinal sin in the game development industry is spilling trade secrets if you know, if you guys understand what I'm, I'm talking about uh otherwise people in the games industry bounce from company to company to company right like they'll work somewhere for two years like she got hired for uh i think some korean um maybe like lineage i think the people that make lineage do you guys know that uh it's like a korean mmo i think they hired her for a couple of years to fire people because they didn't want to fire people, so they hired her to fire people. Because they, they were too nice, they didn't like firing people, so they hired her to, to come in and prune the company down because they had too many too many staff, really. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so once you're in, you, people bounce around from company to company to company. Uh, the trouble is getting in. And, and getting your first job in the games industry is the single hardest step. After that, um, once you've got, once you've collected um, games credits, you can 
apply, work here, work there, work anywhere. Um, a lot of times they'll headhunt you too, which means they'll recruit you. Like, hey, I know you're working over there. Uh, we'll offer you $300,000 a year to come work for us. And my boss used to collect those letters and he would show them to our boss, our, our mutual boss. And be like, hey, I just got offered $200,000. Can you match it? Can you match it? I'm looking for, I want to hear 220. I want to hear 220. No, yeah, no, yeah, okay, yeah. All right, cool. And so he would just take his, his headhunter letters and be like, oh, look, I got a new new offer, 240. Can you match it? Can we, uh, I'm, I'm looking for 250. You don't hear 250, 250, 260, 260. All right, I got a 260. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, you know, you can, you can make quite a lot of money. Once, once you're in. So this class is designed to give you the basics and to hopefully help you start working on a portfolio because that's really what will set you apart from other people. There's a million people that would love to make video games and they think that they would be great at making video games even though they have no skills whatsoever because they like playing video games. As it turns out, those are different skills. Liking playing video games is not the same thing as being able to design a video game, and it's not the same thing as being able to make a video game. Those are three different skills. Playing, designing, and making. And design is like an actual job. Like Somebody has to sit down and be like, all right, Bioshock Infinite. Here's, <laughs> here's the art style. Here's the story. Here's the game systems. Like somebody actually has to design it, and then people implement that design. So uh, this class will teach you the basic skills across the semester, the basic skills. And then if you want to learn more advanced skills, take second semester IS50B. And that's offered every semester as well. Uh, it's co-taught because we never have enough people in second semester uh, game development to warrant a separate section. And so they're sort of uh, taught at the same time, kind of technically. But what I'm doing is I'm going to say um, this class is 130 to 3, and then IS50B is 3 to 4. And if that's more hours than it should be, uh, that's just mean, meaning I'm not getting paid for IS50B. And I'm fine with that. I'm basically teaching IS50B for free. And that's all. I like, I like teaching video games. It's a lot of fun. And I learn a lot, too. So. Um, all right. So uh, this class is, in, is also not just for gamers. So uh, I asked how many people here play video games. Nobody said they hadn't, but every semester there's usually somebody who's never played a video game before. And, um, and this game will actually be good for you because for two reasons. First of all, it'll build your technical skills. Uh, if you are like a computer science person and you want experience programming, uh, games are a great project to learn to program on. And, and they're sort of designed differently. And it kind of helps you grow as a programmer. And two, there's a lot of things in the real world so to speak, the, the lessons from game design will help with. There's uh, this thing called gamification. And 70% uh, of all Fortune 2000 companies plan to use gamification. So gamification is when you take something that's not a game and you use the lessons of game design to make it more interesting or more compelling or yeah, cause people to work harder or something like that. So for example, um, my cousin her life insurance company uh, gives them gold coins every time they go to the gym for half an hour. And so, uh, and so she collects a gold coin every time she goes to the gym for half an hour. And once you collect 50 gold coins, they'll send you, you know, a hundred bucks or uh, she got like a stuffed animal and you know, like you can cash in your gold coins for stuff. You're like, why the hell would a life insurance company care if you work out? Anyone know why a life insurance company wants you to be healthy? Anyone want to take a crack at that one? <laughs> While I'm drinking my second coffee of the day. As I dump coffee on myself. Uh, live longer? Yeah, then they don't have to... I have a drinking problem, clearly. <laughs> can't drink properly just dump coffee on myself humans like rewards you don't die early you stop paying them yeah 
Exactly. If people live longer, then they uh, don't have to pay out the half million dollars or whatever the, the thing is. So they, they give like some, you know, cheesy rewards. You know, some of them were not cheesy, like, you know, a hundred bucks or whatever is not, not, not insignificant. Uh, Starbucks does like Starbucks bingo where like the spaces on the Starbucks board are like uh, visit twice, two days in a row, visit once in the morning, once in the afternoon, visit five days in a row, buy a coffee, a sandwich and a dessert. And these are spots on a bingo board. And when you get five in a row, then uh, you, you win uh, 75 stars or whatever like that. And uh, 150 stars is enough for a free pastry. So, um, yeah, it's, it's actually a fairly... Like, if you fill out the whole board, it's probably, uh, I don't know, like, enough for, like, a couple free drinks. Yeah, so maybe 15, 20 bucks, you know. Um, you're going to spend more than 20 bucks filling out the board, let me tell you. But yeah. there have there been times when... I went to Starbucks purely to fill out a corner piece on the board. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'd already gone there in the morning and uh, I'm looking at my board. I'm like, oh, I need that corner piece and I'll fill out this one and this one and this one. So I'll get like 300 stars, which is like six bucks. Okay. So I went over there, bought a coffee, put it in my fridge, drank it the next day and, uh, you know, got enough stars to get a free, a free coffee, you know? Um, gamification is a real thing. Um, and, and a, a big part of that is because, um, people, um, uh, people, um, like fun, right? Like the, that principle of fun that I was talking about, like people like fun things, you know? And, um, we like being around fun people, right? Like, um, you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, the only real social death penalty is being boring. You know what I mean? Like, the only people we really don't want to be around are, like, just boring people. You know, if somebody is, like, funny and they're kind of an asshole, like, we'll still hang out with them. You know what I mean? Like, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, like, we want to be around interesting people and fun people and stuff like that. And we're actually willing to put up with a fair amount of, you know, nonsense to be around fun people, you know? Um, boring is just like, man, nobody wants to be around a boring person, you know what I mean? So, you can take that principle and apply it to, uh, you know, the real world, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, nobody wants to be at a business that's boring to work for. Boring is soul stealing. It really is. It really is. Like, the worst job I ever had was getting paid to do nothing. Like, quite literally. Quite literally, I was paid to do nothing. Um, I had completed my job, but they wouldn't let me leave. For months. Like, don't quit. We're going to need you again. I'm like, what do you want me to do? They're like, just come into the office and just sit there. And we will pay you all those hours. No, no reports. No, nothing. Just sit there. Nothing to do. I tried playing video games on the computer and they yelled at me. No, cannot play video games on our property. I'm like, you want me to just sit here? Oh, you can read a book. So I just sit there and stare at a blank wall for an hour. And get paid 15 bucks for it or whatever. <laughs> it was the worst job. I, I was actually starving to death at the time because I could not. They would pay me however many hours I owned to work. And it was, it was literally come in and stare at a blank wall as many hours as I wanted and get paid 15 bucks an hour, which was a lot of money back then, to come in and stare at a blank wall. And I couldn't do it. It was so horrible. If they had at least given me something to do, like, that would have been one thing. But, like, it was so boring that I couldn't afford food. That's how bad it was. And now take that and apply it to, like, somebody being an accountant or something like that, right? And, and there's a lot of people, there's like uh, only like one out of four people actually like their job. If, if you think about how sad that is, like one out of four people like their job, one out of four people are okay with it. And then the other half hate their job, right? If you think about how horrible that is for like your mental health or like just what it says for us as a human species, you know, like you can see why companies would be interested in gamification because you can make accounting fun, you know, <laughs> you know, shoot the taxes away. I don't know. Like, 
Um, if, if you can increase you know, the amount of fun that your employees are having, then uh, they're less likely to quit or, you know, whatever, right? So if only unions were more prominent. I don't know, man. Unions, I think, would love for me to sit there and stare at a wall. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird... Like, it's, it's a very easy job, right? Like, you know, unions typically vote for, you know, lowered, lowered workloads, and there's nothing lower than zero, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and so gamification is, you know, it's something, you, you know, the principles you learn in this class will help. Uh, you'll learn about how humans work. You're going to learn about human vision, human perception, human psychology. That's all very interesting stuff. Um, and it's three o'clock, so it's about time to switch over to the 50B people. But I'm just going to end with this. If you, The better you understand human psychology, the better off you're going to be in life. And games can teach you a lot about human psychology. Like, what interests us? What captures our attention? What, uh, what do we find fascinating? What do we find boring? And um, that's a lot of life. Because like I said, you know, boring is one of the worst things in the world. And so, you know, maybe you can make yourself more interesting by, I don't know, attaching gold coins to your head or something. I don't know. Well, in there. So, the, uh, the quiz for today is to uh, uh, to answer what the magic word is. What do you guys want the magic word to be? It's going to be a one-question quiz just to see if you guys were here and paying attention. Somebody toss out a meme word or, or something. Why my major has me taking psych class. Yeah. Yeah, psych? Yeah. yeah. Stonks. Kachow. Disco Elysium. Poggers. Uh, let's see. I'll go stonks. Okay. So, you guys all hear that? Quiz for today. Counts as your attendance. Make sure you take it. Answer the magic word. It's going to be stonks. That's it. Okay. So, stonks. That's it. And that will count as your, your daily quiz for today. On uh, Thursday, get Unreal Engine installed and ready to go. And we will start working on Unreal Engine then. Okay. So, thank you very much, IS50A people. Uh, you're all cool. You're awesome. Thank you for coming today. And we are going to now, I'm going to take off my 50A hat and put on my 50B hat. And I will um, stop the recording here and um, start recording a new lecture for the 50B people. Okay. So I will see you guys all on Thursday. And thanks for coming. Thanks for signing up for the class, too. It is going to be fun.